Welcome. I am a lay Shin Buddhist who nevertheless maintains an interest in the broader realm of Pure Land and Mahayana Buddhist teachings. My YouTube channel is called Akala Akala, that is A-C-A-L-A-A-C-A-L-A. -A 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 -A. In these podcasts, I make a non-scholarly, humble, and sometimes bumbling attempt to explore a particular topic or question related to the wonderful Buddha Dharma. I hope you find them to be of interest. With that said, let us begin. So, I mentioned in a previous podcast a reference to Barbara Brown's book, Holy Envy. This was a book by a, an Episcopal priest who basically was teaching, actually had for like 20 years been teaching a course on Religion 101 in a, I think, a relatively rural part of the south of the United States. And in that particular course, I think she highlighted five different major world religions and took the students on tours of, you know, various representations of these different traditions. But in any case, I may have also mentioned that we're sort of studying this book in the context of a, a reading a study group at the local Episcopal Church. And that church has been welcoming to me as a Buddhist over the course of time. And so I was happy to attend this along with my significant other. So in chapter 9 of her book, entitled Born Again, she mentions the idea of divine multiplicity. And the way she describes it is that one God can answer to more than one name and assume more than one form. Well, I find this idea to be very consistent with Buddhism in many respects. At a very sort of concrete level, for example, we have in Mahayana Buddhism many different Buddhas populating the cosmos, anywhere from, again, as we think of Amida Buddha to Vairochana and the Medicine Buddha and Ashkobaya Buddha and many other Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. In other words, our cosmos is filled with these various emanations from the Dharmakaya, which is beyond all words and concepts. And by the way, she acknowledges in this particular chapter also under the rubric of the Holy Spirit, which is one of the trinity within Christianity, the idea that this, this spirit, which again I would take to be sort of analogous in some ways to the Dharmakaya, cannot be described in words or concepts, cannot be pinned down with any particular attributes. But that's getting a little bit away from the story of this idea of uh, God answering to more than one name and assuming more than one form. The entity within Buddhism that, to my mind, most illustrates this notion of more than one form is the Bodhisattva of Alokiteshvara, the regarder of the cries of the world, uh, who was described in chapter 25 of the Lotus Sutra. And in that chapter, we see this Bodhisattva, who is a direct emanation of Amida and a representative of Amida Buddha's infinite compassion. We see him transforming himself into a variety of forms, depending on what the needs are of a particular individual and the exact circumstances of the distress that they're experiencing. So just to give a few examples, in the Lotus Sutra it says, To those who must be saved in the body of an elder, he appears as an elder and preaches to them the law. To those who must be saved in the body of a citizen, he appears as a citizen and preaches to them the law. To those who must be saved in the body of a minister of state, he appears as a minister and preaches to them the law. To those who must be saved in the body of a bhikshu, bhikshuni, upsaka, or upsika, he appears as a bhikshu, bhikshuni, upsaka, or upasika, and preaches to them the law. To those who must be saved in the body of the wife of an elder, citizen, minister, or brahmin, he appears as a woman and preaches to them the law. Speaking of women, by the way, Barbara Brown actually says that she is most attracted to the idea of thinking of this Holy Spirit in feminine form. And of course, we also know that Avalokiteshvara, the way that sort of image evolved over the course of time, particularly as it transferred from India over to China, was that he, in the Lotus Sutra, was ultimately perceived much more broadly in female form as a she, and referred to, of course, by the Chinese name Guan Xin Yin or Guan Yin or Quan Yin. And of course, Quan Yin means the same thing, or Canon in Japan uh, means regarder of the cries of the world. But it's interesting how 
in many respects, it's more comforting to believers to relate to the divine embodiment of compassion in female form. But getting to the main point of the podcast, how I tied this in and how I actually plan to bring this to the attention of this reading group when we get together again in about a week is that I was reciting from the book Illustrated Life of Shinran Shonen, who of course was the founder of Shin Buddhism or Jodo Shinshu. And there's a section there, section five, where it talks about Shinran having his famous vision of the Bodhisattva of Alokiteshvara at the Rokaku Temple. And in this vision, Avalokiteshvara spoke to Shinran, and the great Bodhisattva said, The mercy of the Tathagata Amida does not discriminate between man and woman, between priest and layman. The Tathagata cannot but vow to have all humanity reborn into the pure land of bliss. In order to fulfill this vow, the Tathagata is willing to incarnate himself into various forms of life and sacrifice himself on the altar of compassion. And then Avalokiteshvara said to Shinran, Now go and let people know of this gospel freely and with a good grace. And as the story goes, and again, this is a somewhat more idealized kind of version of the, the biography of Shinran, if you will. But in this, in this sort of uh, illustrated, uh, more simplified kind of version, the story goes that at this moment, Shinran, who at that time was called Hanan, was looking eastward directly facing Rokaku Temple and found congregating there an immense number of people. And to these people he passed on the message of the Tathagata. No sooner had he come to an end of what he had to say respecting the gospel announced by the Bodhisattva than he awoke from the dream. So this was a key dream that sort of led Shinran further into the, into the belief of his teacher Honan that Amida Buddha's vow was the basis upon which we feel we can sort of pin our hopes for the future in terms of our ultimate destination after we die. Just one other thing before I end this podcast, which is that, to her great credit, Barbara Brown also indicates this, this notion that our best ways of thinking and speaking about God are provisional, reflecting our limited perspectives, responding to our particular lives. So this is very consistent with Mahayana Buddhism in the sense that any concept system, any theory, any way of thinking about the divine that's formulated in words and thoughts and concepts has to, by definition, be provisional because ultimate reality cannot be accurately characterized by words and concepts. But that again, if there is this divine reality that's beyond all words and concepts, in our terms, the Dharmakaya, that this divine reality does in fact respond to our particular lives and circumstances in ways that are meaningful to us and that resonate with the reality of that, what Shinran called, that inconceivable light. Namo Mirabots. With that, I will sign off by reciting the Nembutsu in gratitude for being embraced and accepted just as I am by Amida Buddha, never, never to be abandoned. Namo Amida Namo Namo Namo